Figma AI is here and it brings a lot of cool new features along with it which were just launched at Figma Config. Let me take you through all the features and how they really work and at the end of the video also let's discuss some controversial stuff happening at this event and how people are reacting to this. So the first feature here is making designs with prompts. So you type in a prompt based on your requirements, the app, the website, whatever it is and it auto generates a user interface for you which is editable of course. In the background they're utilizing a lot of pre-made assets and components that the Figma team has created. However, they are promising that material design and other such design systems can be leveraged using this AI. So you'll have a choice of what kind of design system you want in your designs. Once you generate a design using prompts in Figma AI, you can now also quick edit these designs. So you can tweak things like typography, border radius, colors, gradients, etc. for quick edits. Second feature which is close to my heart is the quick prototyping. So now instead of manually drawing prototypes from one screen to the other, it automatically understands if there is a button which takes you to another page and generates a quick prototype. Of course, this prototype will have basic animations or basic transitions and will of course work on click triggers and not other triggers like hover, etc. So it won't understand that completely right now. But for now, you just have click triggers from one page to the other. Third thing which got a lot of people excited and people were cheering for this, clapping for this on stage was the rename layer feature. So it rename your current existing layers and also child layers. So if there is a card, it will name it to card one or whatever it is. And then it will name the elements inside that card as well, which is quite nice. Of course, it recognizes everything on screen. So if there is a song title, it will name it as song title, which is pretty interesting. Third feature that they were pushing out a lot was the AI search feature, which has different levels to it. Now, visual search is like Google Lens, but for Figma. So what it does is you can upload any screenshot you have of a UI design. And and this tool will find similar assets and designs in your Figma files. So if you created a design which is similar to that design or has similar assets to that design, it will then match it with that and show it to you. And apart from that, they're also promising that in the search bar of the assets panel, if you describe a design or if you describe an asset, it will try and find those assets for you inside your Figma project. The next feature is of course, well expected, is adding relevant content. So if you have a bunch of screens designed and you have lorem ipsum and stuff like that in those screens, including even generating images, of course, this is using OpenAI to do it. So you will find a lot of those same OpenAI mistakes in those images as well, like the weird text that shows up. Of course, there were again plugins for this already available. So people will stop using those plugins probably. And of course, as a cherry on the top, they've also added removing backgrounds as a default feature inside Figma. So you can just now ask Figma AI to remove a background and it will from any image that you have. Now, the next feature is actually kind of like a new tool by Figma now. It's called Figma Slides. It is a brand new interface where you can create or generate slides from your existing designs as well. You have a lot of pre-made templates and assets for these slides and presentations as well, which you can just quickly choose from. And all the editing inside Figma slides will work very similar to how you edit, like auto layout is available in Figma slides as well, which is a really nice touch. And at any point of time, you can switch from a basic Figma slides view to a more advanced Figma design view. You also have something called grids view. So your entire team can see an entire grid of all the slides that you have created and comment on each one of them. And Figma slides is available for all of us to try now. So you can always go ahead and try it out. Next feature is the completely revamped UI design of Figma. Yes, Figma now has a completely new look. Might take some time to get used to because it has a lot of other things which we weren't expecting. On the panel on the right, you will now see a lot of these little boxes. Earlier, these were just text areas or text inputs. It felt much more minimal, to be honest, in my opinion. I think this makes it a little trickier to understand. And cognitive load is gonna be much more. I don't know why these gray boxes are there all of a sudden. I like the hovering card style on the left and right don't get me wrong but the whole new gray boxes all over the place uh, gives me a little bit of PTSD. I don't know. Another update is that inside FigJam for FigJam users you will now have a FigJam pages so inside every FigJam board 
you will now have pages just like you had in Figma, which can be really useful for a lot of teams out there. You also have a responsive prototyping viewer. So now while you are prototyping a design, you can go from mobile view to web view or to a tablet view really quick. Another one is our favorite auto layout. Auto layout will now understand much better. If you have a UI design, you make it auto layout, it will automatically understand how to make it more responsive and you won't have to do a lot of the manual labor and stuff that you had to do earlier to make auto layout work better. And last but not the least, UI kits will now be officially inside your Figma asset span. So you don't have to duplicate a UI kit from the community anymore. Things like Google material design and Apple HIG are already available inside the Figma asset panel in all your projects. Apart from this, there were other smaller changes and changes to dev mode. I'll have a link to all the changes in the description, but let's talk about the controversy and what people are not liking about this update. Let's talk about that as well. Okay, so the first thing that I am not liking is of course the UI design revamp. The second thing is of course, AI, Figma AI and how it's working and how people are worried that their files will now be used for Figma AI to study or to learn from our private file. So inside their official blog, which is Figma Shortcut, they've introduced all these features, but at the bottom they have the approach and data privacy along with the Figma AI. So their approach says that none of the Figma AI features they've shown till now are being generated with your designs. The AI that they're using is mostly open AIs, chat GPT, etc. on public free community files. So if somebody has put up a free community file for everyone to view, they will be using these files to help the AI study and learn and then create UI designs, etc. Now they have highlighted this section, this paragraph right here. First, all admins have control of whatever their team's content data is used for training. So yes, in the future, Figma can use your files to train their AI or for their AI to start understanding new things. So if you want, you can always opt out of it. Now here is where things can get a little negative for people, where people can get retaliate. The starter and professional plans, which most of you guys use, is being by default opted in to have all your customer data also and all your Figma files to be accessed by the Figma AI models to study and learn. Luckily, I don't think Figma is gonna leak any of this information, but just make sure that this setting is always off you turn off sharing with AI or access to AI so that your files are 100% safe. Guys, if you like this update, hit the like button or comment down any of your griefs, any of your anger down in the comments. Let's have a debate. Let's see if people like this or not. I'll see you every week just like this. So make sure you subscribe. And until next time, take care. God bless.